Alrighty guys, so today we are talking about dogs that tend to bite. Now, out of the 4.9 million dog bites that were reported in 2017 to the insurance companies, only 10% of those actually caused injury needing medical assistance. So that's a pretty good statistic saying that dog bites are actually dropping in rate when it comes to medical assistance needed, which means you guys, the community, are doing a good job training your dogs. And you know, the statistic has dropped in 2016, there was 7.9 million dog bites reported and only, uh, I think it was 13% actually needed medical assistance, but that's still a very high number of dog bites reported. So, you know, almost double the amount needed medical assistance. So let's go ahead, get started with our list. Number five happens to be the Australian Shepherd. The Australian Shepherd is a big dog. It's probably around 40 to 50 pounds and they do tend to get a little hyper and they do tend to get a little on the fearful side which then leads to that fearful biting or nipping that they tend to do. Uh, so, you know, this with good training, you can really overcome this boundary, boundary of your dog. And if you do have a shepherd, you know, or, or an Australian shepherd, you do want to make sure you do talk to a trainer and work with them in depth. All right, number four. Number four is the German Shepherd Dog. The German Shepherd Dog happens to also be number four on the most common dog sold in the United States today. All right, so that's kind of a scary statistic when you have both dogs are both on both lists. All right, now the German Shepherd is a fantastic dog. They're amazing family pets. Uh, people are overbreeding them and that is why it's leading to this epidemic of dogs and dog bites with German Shepherds. They're so smart, so intelligent, and they really just need some good stable training and you won't have an issue at all. Number two happens to be the American Staffshire Terrier. And a couple years ago, they were number one and very rapidly, they're starting to fall off this list, which is fantastic. And you know, the most misunderstood dog in the world is the American Staffshire Terrier, one of my favorite breeds, one of the best breeds when it comes to children, one of the best breeds when it comes to, you know, just overall understanding of dog and human relation. The problem is backyard breeders. There are so many backyard breeders breeding these dogs improperly, causing biological issues with these dogs, and that's why we're seeing the dog bites happen from the American Staffshire Terrier. Number two, number two happens to be the Bulldog. The Bulldog is another one of those dogs that is just overbred, not trained, and they tend to be small and just neurotic. They really are difficult to train and one of my least favorite dogs to really work with because they are so stubborn. A bulldog is just that dog that, that you love when they're little, but once they get big and you realize what you're dealing with, people tend to give up on them. And that's why they go back to those animal instinct behaviors, which in turn turns out to be some of aggression and you really have to be cautious when you're using these dogs. I do recommend if you do want to get a bulldog, go and seek a trainer's advice and have a trainer available to you so they can help you through some of the processes. So a bulldog could be a great loving pet for you and your family with proper training. Now, not surprising at all, but the number one dog happens to be a Chihuahua. And the reason why Chihuahuas are our number one dog is the, the, just the way they are. They're small, people tend to pick them up. They put them in purses, they carry them around constantly. They don't walk them properly because they're just that small. People feel I'm just gonna pick them up. So, you know, if you have a Chihuahua, please make sure you talk to a trainer and make sure when you talk to that trainer, you explain some of the issues you're having. Chihuahuas need to be in training classes for at least two years into their life. If you can't get into a training class, at least talk to somebody about how you can overcome some of the issues. Uh, you can always go to your local shelters or SPCA. There are trainers there that are more than happy to help you. Also go to your local pet stores. 
they have trainers there that do free consultations that will be able to give you some advice when it comes to these smaller breeds that we're starting to see a trend of smaller breeds ending up on this list because they are just not getting trained and people just get them because they're so cute to carry around. Well, I'm gonna tell you those dogs actually require more training than 90% of the dogs on this list. So please, if you have any questions, please note them in the comments below. Tell me about your dog and what you're doing to overcome their instinctual behavior to protect and bite. And you know, lastly and most important, you know, just enjoy your dogs, train your dogs, walk your dogs, stimulate them properly, and you won't have any issues if you do have any of these dogs on the list here. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Remember, tomorrow we're dropping our big review on our new dental toys. So yeah, they're fantastic. And I'll see you guys later. Have a great week. Thank you very much. Peace.